Hey, welcome everybody to this 2023 grant announcement for the Flickr and the Black Women Photographers Community um, grant. So basically, we're Flickr and the Black Women Photographers Group have partnered together to do some pretty cool and interesting things for photographers, in this case, Black women photographers. So I'm going to read a little bit about this grant um, so that everybody can be on the same page as to why this thing was created and what is being given away and all the things. And then we're going to step through the runners up um, with Edwina Hay, who is one of the judges on the panel. She's also on this live stream. And then at the end, we're going to announce the winner. So stay tuned for that. So I'm going to read this little blurb for you guys and uh, we'll dive into it. And by the way, I'm not switching the cameras. My partner in crime there, Alistair Jolly, normally is sitting in the seat and doing this live stream, but he uh, had a had a uh, life thing happen, so he gets to be behind the camera today. <laughs> You'll find out about that later. Follow him on Instagram. But anyway, so we're going to dive into this. Let me read this this blurb here. So. Uh, Flickr and the Black Women Photographers community have partnered again to offer a $2,500 grant to a member of their Flickr community. The idea is to assist the recipient in receiving or reaching their photography goals. Ten runners up will receive a one year Flickr Pro membership and a one year Smug Mug Pro membership. All of this is a $420 value. So really, really good stuff. And, you know, the more important, most important thing about all this is um, photography, right? So I look at these kind of grants and these contests as a way for photographers to kind of, you know, get off their butts and go out and shoot and have a reason to shoot. Not that we all need one, but it's good to have like a little, little carrot, little incentive out there to, to keep us going. So to talk about this grant with me is Edwina Hay. And if you are a follower of This Week in Photo or on that podcast, my, my podcast, you will already have met Edwina. If you have not, I encourage you to go check out that interview. Uh, but Edwina is a freelance photographer. She's based in Brooklyn, New York. She specializes in live music, event photography, and portraits. And as a music lover and native, native New Yorker, she has photographed musicians, uh, performing on stage for more than two decades. So she knows her way around photography, knows her way around the camera and all the good stuff. So Edwina, welcome to this grant. We're going to talk about it. You ready to talk about all this stuff? <laughs> so excited to talk about it. Yeah, this is going to be good. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for doing this. And uh, I, I'm really excited that, that Flickr and the Black Women, Women Photographers community have kind of come together. Hopefully this is an ongoing, ongoing thing. But, you know, I've come together to, you know, do something. So this is this is interesting. Can you talk a little bit, you know, uh, about your involvement with the group? I know you're not the founder. Polly is the founder who couldn't be here today because of bandwidth considerations. She's in a hotel because she's moving and the bandwidth was not amazing. Um, but we have us here, you and I are here to talk about this. So let's, what your involvement in the group, when I interviewed you, you were telling me that you were a judge and we, we went through all kinds of tangents, break <laughs> it down for me. How do you, how do you, uh, how do you get down in the group? Yeah, I feel like I became aware of the group when it started, like Polly, um, created the website and basically was just collecting names of black women photographers around the country and globe. And I just started following them on social media, such as Instagram and Facebook, and just became aware of them and um, the great work that they were doing. I remember during the pandemic, they had a print sale where photographers could just donate, you know, they would um, submit one photo to um, be available on their website for sale for a limited time of uh, period. And then basically, you know, black women photographers got some money, but the photographer that made the image, any prints that they sold received the payment from those uh, prints, which was great because, yeah. you know, everything was shut down and it was like a nice way to make some money while things were closed and COVID was rampant and nothing was really happening. So it was a great resource for a lot of people. Yeah, 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 I, I totally agree. And uh, during that adventure, that COVID adventure, 
there was, if, if, if we all remember correctly, there wasn't really an end in sight, right? No one had any right. idea what oh, was going to happen day to day, month to month, right. the economy, everything was up in the air. So, and especially mm -hmm. impacted were freelancers like photographers and, or gig workers or anybody that had anything to do with being in contact with the public mm -hmm. were not in a good position. Yeah. So yeah, this was, I'm sure this was a, a godsend to a ton of people. Let me, let me read a bit about the BWP, the black women photographers group community. And uh, just, so I'm going to read this blurb just so that everyone in the audience knows exactly what it is and what the numbers are. So sure. the group was established in July of 2020 by Polly Rungu. She's black women photographers, you know, the, the, the inception maker, the, 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 uh, the founder, I guess is the best word for it. Um, and the community is global. It's a directory and it's a hub of over 2000 black women and non-binary identifying photographers spanning over 60 countries and 35 us states. BWP was launched with a $14,000, $14,500 COVID-19 relief fund to help black women photographers in dire need of financial relief due to the pandemic. And so far, BWP has provided over $115,000 in financial grants to black creatives, plus brand new mirrorless Nikon gear. Look at that, Nikon. So, yeah, um, yeah. yeah. One so of wow. So <laughs> it's pretty much life changing. Yeah, yeah, no, that's really good. That is really good. So, all right. Um, so now that now that the audience knows what we know, so you know the background, you know who Edwina is. Oh, who am I? I'm Frederick Van Johnson. Uh, I am the host of a podcast called This Week in Photo. You can find it at thisweekinphoto.com. Uh, uh, it's uh, it's a long running podcast. I don't want to dive into it. <laughs> Edwina has been on it. She was a guest on there, and we talked about all things, including a little Beyonce talk. So we'll have to we'll have to we got to close the loop on that Beyonce talk. <laughs> Uh, but without without further delay, let's dive into this because I know everybody is here to learn about this this grant announcement. We're going to start with the runners up, and the, but let's even before that, let's talk about the grant theme. So the theme for this this the mission was to uh, capture light in motion, or the theme was light in motion, and it was inspired by this photo. And this is one of your photos, right, Edwina? So yes. this shot, tell, tell us about this shot and, and tell us why light in motion was the perfect choice for this. And this wasn't your choice, right? This was between you and the Flickr group and kind of a collaborative choice or how did it all go down? Yeah, I think um, someone at Flickr selected it. Um, like, I guess, because they knew I was asked to be a judge, they found this photo and came up with that themes. I think it was Mackenzie. Thank you, Mackenzie. Um, but uh, this is an artist by the name of June McDoom. She's uh, originally from Miami, but she lives in Brooklyn, New York. And this was taken at her record release show at a venue called Babies All Right, which has like the back wall is covered in like ashtrays and lights. So because um, I just decided to play around with a filter uh, and the, the stage lights and that light in the back wall, you know, using a, a filter to kind of get the motion in the lights and circling around her. Yeah, this is great. This is great. I love this. It's one of the things I love about photography and that's just the, the, the mystery of light, right? And what you can mm -hmm. do with it, especially when you understand what it's doing and how to, how to kind of control it to get, get it to do what you want on the sensor or the film. And this is mm -hmm. an example of that, right? Mixing this is almost like time travel to me where you're mixing a moment in time with a stretched out moment in time mm -hmm. and putting them together in the same frame as, as for this. That's how this speaks to me, you know, as, as well as the motion, but more of the time travel, capturing time travel in a single click. Love it. Um, let's talk about our runners up. So let's dive into these, these wonderful people, all these images. And I was, by the way, I helped judge these as well. So all the images, in the in the gallery which we will link to that to the full gallery from the replay blog post for this announcement but the uh the images are just outstanding there's a ton of just outstanding images in there that ex it inspired me to go out and try some interesting right. things so which is what it's all about right that's the whole purpose of the Flickr group and Flickr, right is to to be inspirational to people who just love photography so the first runner up is uh Ngadi Smart, I think I'm pronouncing that right, N-G-A-D-I, Ngadi Smart, and her image was titled Family. Family. Look at this one. 
Yeah. What do you What do you think? I love it. It's just a great moment captured on film with the different hands and multiple exposures. And then you've got like the creative light because of the look on film. Um, it's just really beautiful. I think we all found it beautiful. And then she's capturing a family. So you can see different size hands kind of overlapping each other, but also kind of touching the, the, the mother's stomach, which is really beautiful. Yeah. And this is, this is one of those shots that'll, I mean, it's, it, it feels artistic, right? So I could see this hanging mm -hmm. in a gallery, but I could also see it, see it hanging in someone's house, you know, this family's right. home. And this one spoke to me mainly because it's non-traditional, it's non-traditional family portrait, right? Mm -hmm. So when, when the family looks back on this portrait, like 20 years from now or whatever, and they just see, oh, yeah, my hands used to look like that, or that's when you were in my belly, you know, right, that, yeah. it, it evokes those feelings. And that again, time travel, right? That snapshot of what's going on at this moment. Cause the, the importance of photography is that, you know, you take a photo, you don't know what's going to happen two or four or whatever to the people in, that are in front of your camera the next minute day hour year after that so all things could have changed after this photo was taken making this photo that much more important so really good work really good work um our next runner-up is aisha kazim kazim and her image was called mirage mirage yeah, I think this was like a, uni a unanimous pick, like everyone who was on the panel really enjoyed this image. Like I love the motion of the earring and um, the movement, like she, the person used a slow shutter speed. So you're catching like movement and the motion of like her hair and earring and then the, the soft light, like it's really well lit too. It's really mm -hmm. beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and this this one is an example of you don't you don't need like the the latest and greatest nikon sony canon fuji lumix camera this is i mean this you could do this technique and understanding how the if you understand how to do this technique which is kind of a, a slow shutter drag with a flash popped in there if you understand how to do this then that becomes a tool in your toolbox Absolutely. no matter what camera you have even if it's an iphone or whatever you can do this kind of photography and then bring it into post and do other things to it. But understanding mm -hmm. the fundamentals of light and composition and emotion at a light level versus a, oh, I have a camera where I can push a button and it has a mode that will do this. You, know, you understand how to do it yourself. You have superpowers after that. You just start stacking your superpowers as a photographer once you know how to do one technique like this. So. Right. Yeah, and it's, it. it's is... a simple background, so you don't need much. You can just do this in a room with a wall and you really can't tell when this was taken. Like this could be have yep. this could have been done in the eighties or seventies or contemporary. Like it's a pretty classic photograph. Yeah, it's it's timeless. Absolutely. Absolutely. Very cool. All right. Next up is Michelle Veen Bain Ish. Veen Bain Ish. I think I got it. Sorry for butchering that if I did. And her image was Mothio. Mothio. Mm. Yeah, this is another Mothio means. <laughs> this is another gorgeous one. It's just a simple portrait that's well lit, but then you have the motion streaks in her hair kind of going upward of the frame, which is really, really nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Again, this one draws you in. Again, mastering light, understanding how how to play with light and draw with it on your mm -hmm. frame is is a skill, right? And I look at this shot, and one of the main purposes of photography is to draw you in and make you look at, you know, bring you into the shot deeper. Kind of like in email marketing, they, email marketers say the job of an email or the subject line is to get you to open the email okay. and read yeah. the email. And like with these, with images, you, in or, if you want to draw someone into the story you're trying to tell them, you got to catch them somehow or else you're, you know, especially today in a sea of scrolling, right? There's got to be that thing. And this one has that thing. Cause I look at it and I'm like, what is going on with her hair? And how did, then I go into, how did they, do, how did she do this? Mm -hmm. How did she put it together? You know, and then I look at the face and I'm not trying to understand what's going on with the expression and it just kind of all works together. So well done. Well done. All right. But I still want to know what Mafio is. Is that the person's name? Or is... We'll have to look that up later. 
<laughs> yeah, and again, all of these shots will will you'll be able to go back and look on your high resolution screen and uh, enjoy them there once we uh, send out the replay for this or, or send out the announcement blog post. Uh, Julia Holcomb is next, and her shot was bubbles, bubbles. Yeah, this is just lovely. Like I love the little girl playing. Uh, blowing bubbles and then you've got like the light coming in the frame which kind of makes it look like she's surrounded in a bubble so it's just yeah. really smart and well executed and then you've got the family looking on in the background it's just a really beautiful photo yeah this is very nostalgic for me too i look at this one this like that looks like my big sister right there <laughs> back in the day right so and we all had these kind of most of us had these kind of photos in a drawer somewhere that some family member took had developed and then threw in a drawer with some undeveloped rolls of film and you know and some developed rolls of film in there and we had a drawer just like that and what what brings me there is the choice of black and white in the processing a mm -hmm. um, and capturing it in the thick aggressive white border putting it all mm -hmm. there so that brings me back to old school printing where they used to you didn't have a choice all photos came like this right right and then um and then it draws me in like looking at how the light is reacting on the frame and pointing towards our main subject and then we're in the story we're wondering what's what are what is our main subject doing oh she's blowing bubbles oh mm -hmm. you know so it mm -hmm. all kind of comes together so it works it really works and these kind of shots i feel like especially in the day these days of social media and images just flying by all day every day these kind of shots that that benefit from just taking a second to sit back and look at it and understand what the photographer or the artist was trying to tell you with the shot we're losing a lot of that because of how fast this fire hose is pumping images out we don't have time to spend on any one image and get the story because there's so many stories there's so much mm -hmm. going on which is an incentive for the photographers to differentiate and make your photos stand out so that you know, people pause and come in, right? Your your right. job as a photographer is like the the salesman on the in the mall doing the mall kiosks, right? You're like, okay, come buy my thing. You're mm -hmm. and then when they get over there, hopefully they can't resist what your offering is. But you got to get them over there with some hook. This one has that hook, so I dig it. All right, next up is Melissa Yoen. Oh, Julia just commented that that was a Polaroid photo using film. So, oh, oh bring that quote up again. This is a Polaroid. The... Oh, look at that. So, see, I was right. <laughs> <laughs> this is what those shot. So that even makes it even more special because this wasn't this wasn't uh, this post yeah. processing wasn't intentional, right? This was the photographer capturing the moment, and the camera added the nostalgia on its own. Very cool. Thanks for thanks for commenting. Appreciate that. Really cool. All right, let's bring up Melissa's shot. All right. I have thoughts. What, what do you think of this, Edwina? It's, uh, I, don't, I don't know what to say what I like about it the most. It's like, yes, you have the child and the child's shadow, but then you get the peak of the curtain through the window that the person's taking the image of. And then I love the shadow of the tree that's falling in front of that car in the background. It's so good. Mm -hmm. There's just so much going on and it's, you know, taken from a window. Like you can make images anywhere. Like this is proof of, you know, using the tools that you have and you're like, this is clearly from a window and you don't need much to take a photo. You just need a camera, an idea, and just go ahead and execute it. Yeah. Yep. And then that last part is the hard part, right? The camera and the idea and the, get off your butt sauce and go get the get the photo <laughs> is the other piece of it because you know a lot of us has a uh, yeah maybe speaking from personal experience but a lot of us have gear but we we struggle to find the time to go out and shoot and when we do have the time we're like eh, maybe i'll do it next time right but when you do get over that tipping point you end up with shots like this right when you're like okay i'm just gonna grab the shot let me grab my camera boom you take a bunch of shots and then post processing post process them then you understand why you're a photographer i look at this shot and i immediately see non-standard uh almost like you know in cinematography dutch angle type interest in the shot all these angles and triangles and diagonals add to mm -hmm. making this shot really interesting those harsh shadows are speaking to the shot and then one of the things i was when i looked at the shot initially i was like okay we're gonna there's no subject what's the subject it's a bunch of stuff you know 
And then mm -hmm. you look at it again deeply and all the supporting items in the shot are supporting our main character, which is the, the figure down there at the bottom. And the yeah. shadow is also pointing towards that character, right? So a lot of elements in there are pointing towards that. And we know in photography, our eyes generally track to the brightest point in the scene or words in the scene. In this case, it's the brightest point in the scene. And we can see it's all kind of centered in that middle with the shadows kind of acting to to support who our, who our subject is. So yeah, I like it. I like this one a lot. I like, there's a bunch, there's a couple of other shots in here too. I was looking at this one thinking, yeah, I wonder what this would have looked like at the same angle, but cropped in tighter on our subject down there. So we're just seeing, you know, a bunch of shadow play around the subject and then the subject in the middle. That would have been an interesting abstract. But like this, it's it's really, obviously, it's a runner up. It was really powerful as well. So thank you, Melissa, for that. Very good. All right. Next up is Alexis Brown, Road to the Phoenix. Road to the Phoenix. Look at this. Yeah, that's really well done. Like, it looks like this person's a dancer and it's just capturing their movement with, you know, slow shutter and light and motion. It's just great. Like, they look like they have, yeah. like, you know, multiple hands, but it's just this one figure catching him dancing and moving. And it's mm -hmm. just really beautiful. The colors are great yeah. as well. Yeah, I love that green, the emerald, emerald green and the smoke in there. Yeah, this one, when I looked at this one, this is one of the ones that inspired me to like, okay, yeah, I want to go do this. Because we used to play with this a lot on film way back in the day. You can imagine how hard this is to, inexpensive, this is to, <laughs> to try to get right on film. Uh, but it, it's a good example of t how timeless tech, some photographic techniques are in light is it's the same now as it was 50, 60 years ago. And these kinds of techniques have been around for that much time, but taking those techniques and applying them to your genre, your story is where the magic is, but understanding them is the other piece of it. You know, how, how did this person do that? When I look at these like shots like this that are, that are inspiring, I look at the shot and I'm thinking, Hey, how do I do it? And then I go into my viewer mode, which is, uh, what are they telling me? In the, without looking at a caption or a title, looking at the shot, can I tell what that artist was trying to capture or what they're trying to tell me about this person or about the world, right? And I, I you know, from this one, my perception is this is just uh, a, obviously it feels like this is a dancer and they're mm -hmm. emoting several emotions, right? The title of this one, um, well, we don't have a title for this one, so it's untitled. So if I was to title this one, I would probably title it like uh, multiple personality disorder. I don't know. <laughs> MPD or Medusa or something like that, you know, multifaceted or something, because it, it just speaks to the the multiplicity of most of us, you know, when it comes to personalities and actions and all that. So really good. Yeah, I like it. And, uh, you know, green gels and some smoke, right? That goes a long right. way. <laughs> So, very good. Make use of the smoke. Oh, that was oh that was Road to the Phoenix. Sorry, I, I was looking at the wrong one. This one this one was titled. This that one was Road to the Phoenix. I'm looking at my crossouts wrong on my notes. Um, that was by Alexis Brown, and that is my favorite name, Alexis. All right, the next one is Gabrielle Morse. In my motion. In my motion. That. So yeah, I think we movie. really loved uh, the hair movement and the streaks that the hair is causing. And, you know, you don't see the subject's face, but you can just see, you can tell that they're kind of dancing or twirling. There's some kind of movement. And then you've got the lights with the flash that's hitting them. And like, you can see reds, you can see a little bit of yellows. And it's just a really fun photograph to me, at mm -hmm. least. <laughs> Like, I think yeah. she's yeah. jumping, twirling, or <laughs> so it's just like a nice moment that the person's ca capturing, you know, using flash and movement and light, yeah. which is nice. And it speaks, it's, it speaks to the, like the eye of the photographer, right? So if the, if the photographer was going for the shot, if this shot was intentional and this is like shot 70, 
you know, out of 200, they're trying to get this perfect, which I doubt. I think this was, this is, this feels like it was kind of serendipitous, but it takes the other side of it is to have the, the creative brain to spot a shot like this and not dismiss it immediately because, you know, from a non photographer standpoint, Hey, they're facing away from the camera. The light is a little harsh. I can't see what's in the background. What's going on here, right? Why should I like this? But if you look at it, it draws you in, right? The color palette of the image, even the abyss at the top of the shot kind of makes you wonder where this person was when this was shot. And the harsh of the flash or whatever that light source was that's illuminating them adds to this. It adds to kind of the, what's that word? Cinema verite you know, uh, serendipitous feeling of a shot like this, like, oh, I just caught it. Oh, that look, you know, let me just grab that. That's what it feels. And then it, and then it works, you know, in the end, some photographers would say, you know, they, you could pick this apart from a, from a technical or a contest standpoint, but I feel like this is one of the stronger ones because it really works from a standpoint of being mysterious and drawing me in as the viewer to want to know what's going on in the shot, who this person is, why are they doing this thing? All of that, right? It pulls you right into it. So really yeah, I shot. also like the red streak coming from like the arm on the left side. Like it's, it looks like a little paint thrown in. Like it's really, really well done. Yeah, yeah. And, the, and Gabrielle Morris, again, is the artist. And the title of this is In My Motion. So, so I'm guessing because of the tints, this is a self-portrait maybe? I don't know. Yeah, it could so, be. Yeah, like the Gabriel, arm that we don't chat, see, let us know. The arm that you don't see could be controlling the trigger, so. <laughs> That's right. That is absolutely right. Yeah. It's really cool. That's a great way to hide it. Like, have it off frame, you know? <laughs> yeah. I meant to do that. So, really cool. <laughs> uh, Cameron Chambers is up next, and her shot is titled Lost in Thought. Lost in Thought. Look at this. This this could be the poster frame for like a Netflix series or something, right? It just needs some yeah, coffee like on the side at the top. Or yeah, it's really well done. It's just I love the colors, like the pink and the purple, blue, and then you've got the hands casting a shadow on the wall. It's really mm -hmm. beautiful. Yeah, and the story's there, right? So it pulls us in. Remember, folks, the the. The uh, theme for this grant contest or uh, uh, this whole this whole thing, the, the, the theme for this pool of photos was light in motion, light in motion. So keep that in mind as we look at these. So when you put that in mind, those words light in motion and your inspirational photograph that we looked at off the top, do you think that applies here? I think it does. I want to I want to get your yeah, thoughts on absolutely. it. Like there's a obvious light source and I mean the hands are moving like it, it's however you feel like interpreting it like she's clearly it looks like a bathtub to me so I feel like she's moving in the tub the person's hands the person in the tub um, is moving and gesturing their hands in a way and then you've got like this light that kind of acts like a spotlight on the subject which is really nice yeah yeah I like it too. Yeah, this uh, like I said, this one feels very much like a like a book cover or to a murder mystery or something. <laughs> it, you know, it feels very mysterious. And even the, even the topic, the grant theme, light in motion. You know, if you want if you want to nerd out about it, light is always in motion, right? You can't stop. <laughs> so, so every photograph is a photograph of light that was at some point in motion. So no, I I, I like this one. I like this a lot. And again, there's, a, there's other photos in this one like this standalone. Great. But punching in a little bit to just the rim of the tub and the hands and the shadow, you know, even more kind of abstract at that point, because now you start wondering, oh, where is this person? Looks kind of like a tub by that edge. But in mm -hmm. oh, the in the brickwork in the back, yeah. But, yeah. And why are these hands there? You know, so. Yeah. You know, what's interesting, though, looking at this shot. Look at the hands and the position of the hands and look at the shadow. Like they, you know, I, granted this could just be the, the, the perspective of the camera and the positioning of the light, but it looks mm -hmm. like the shadow is doing different things than those hands are doing. I'm just saying. <laughs> right. Well, I think the shadow on the wall is the top hand and then there's like a, a lower shadow. So that's probably the second one. That's, that's, that's in the tub. Yeah. 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 
But really cool. What a good concept, though, if you were to, mm -hmm. you know, lean into that and actually put some shape that clearly wasn't created by those hands in a shadow on the wall. Yeah. <laughs> that would be interesting. Yeah. Really cool. All right, Cameron, thank you for that shot. Really good. Lost in thought, that was. All right. Uh, the next one is Bria Woods. Bria calls this shot Fourth of July fireworks. There you go. That is light motion for sure. Yeah, it's, I mean, we've all taken photos of fireworks and it's kind of hard to make them interesting, but I love that she has the photo of the child on someone's shoulders and then they're surrounded by the firework, fireworks going off in the distance. And then like the bottom, you can kind of see someone's like, it looks like they're wearing a crown or something on their head. So it's just like, it's more than just the fireworks. It's like, you've got the child and on their parent's shoulders and then you can kind of see another person who's probably a family member. So it's just a really great image, I think. Yeah. Yeah. And, and every 4th of July, I'm the same way. I'm like, okay, how do you, how do you, well, I mean, you know, it's not hard to figure out and find out the recipe for capturing fireworks, right? So, so doing right. that is not the challenge. I think the challenge for a lot of photographers is how do you capture fireworks and make the shot unique? You know, cause you look after, after the 4th of July here in the U S you look on, any social media or image sharing service and it's all fireworks and a lot mm -hmm. of them are amazing so it's like okay why should i shoot it should i just enjoy it and if i am going to shoot it how do i do something different than what everybody else is doing this is an example of that right put a person mm -hmm. in the foreground make it about the act of watching fireworks versus the fireworks themselves. We've all seen a million of them. Or do we need to see more in 2D, right? So, right. you know, make it make it about the story. Lean into the story around the fireworks. You know, even, even detail shots of burnt fireworks in the middle of the street or stuff like that. It kind of tells the story of what happened that day and why is interesting. And this is this is an example of doing that. I wonder like the, the illumination of the subject could have been, I mean, that could have been an, a phone light or headlights mm -hmm. from a car parked, you know, somewhere behind the subject and boom, you got it, right? So slightly mm -hmm. out of focus fireworks. So we know because they're slightly out of focus, that's not what we're supposed to be looking at. And then we have what we're supposed to be looking at in the foreground, again, mysterious, back turned to the camera and semi rimlet by the light from the fireworks, but lit also with a main light from some off camera light source behind the subject. And there we mm -hmm. go, right? All interesting, an interesting shot captures the day. It's different than any other shot like had been taken that day. So very good, I like it. That was Bria Woods, 4th of July fireworks. And then last on our list of runners up is Marcia Williams with Nura. Marcia Williams with Nura. Yeah, this is another one that came up. Like we reviewed the lists of entries and this was pretty much a selected by everyone. It's just mm -hmm. really well done. It's clearly light in motion. Like you've got like light moving on the lower half of the frame and then you've got light in the background in the top right and it's just a really beautiful portrait and it's just someone posing pretty casually like holding on to something and they're looking directly at the camera so you pay attention to their face but then you've got these other nice elements happening in the frame as well yeah yeah and it, it certainly tells the light motion absolutely it checks that box but also like you said the, it's a it's a emotive portrait so when i look i'm looking at this portrait and of course we're gonna as humans or mammals, I guess, you would look directly at the eyes, right? When we, mm -hmm. we want to kind of figure out what's going on. And then in a frame, our eyes will go from looking at the face down to whatever words or other bright objects are in the scene. In this case, it's shared roadway with, um, I'm guessing, uh, bicycles, bicycles, right? You got a little yeah, like an mm -hmm. image of the bicycle on the sign below that. Yep, yep. Yeah. So it makes me, it takes me into the story. Like, why does she look like this? Like, why mm -hmm. is she doesn't she doesn't appear she appears very stoic i don't know if she's happy or not right but why is why is she blank faced and in motion and you know on what kind of conveyance is she on i'm guessing that's either a bus or a or a train like what mm -hmm. what is happening in the shot and what is she feeling 
And why does she look at why is she looking directly into the camera? Is so all of that works together to me as a viewer, like the subject line in the emails designed to pull you into the story. I'm pulled into the story. Like I'm wondering what's happening here and I'm curious to know more. Like I shot like this, I want to see this is like a photojournalism picture story or a photo story, right? Where this is one of a couple of images that are maybe, I don't know, hypothetically documenting this woman's commute to work from, you know, New Jersey to Manhattan or something, right? So this could be that. And it tells it tells that story and why she does it every day. And it takes her three hours to get back and forth and, you know, all that. And I get all that just from looking at the shot. Whereas if the couple of elements of these, this shot were different, I wouldn't have that feeling, right? Or I'd have a different a different feeling about the shot. So really good, very good. Marcia Williams, Nura, our last um, runner up. So Edwina, we've come to that time where we yes. have to announce the winner of this grant. Let me restate what, the, what this winner is gonna get because I'm trying to build anticipation. So the winner, winner, um, uh, let's see, the winner will get, here, here it is, uh, $2,500 grant and uh, 10 runners up will receive, oh, that's the winner. The 10 runners up will, will receive one year Flickr Pro membership. You guys really should check out Flickr, right? I mean, yes, my company is part of the Smug Mug Flickr trifecta, but Flickr is, I would say this even if I weren't part of the company. Flickr is one of those those not it, it's one of those overlooked, super powerful photo services that in many ways launched what for, how photographers share images today. And when I revisited Flickr a couple of years ago, I kind of you know kept my account going all these years, and I revisited and I went in there and started poking around, and I realized why I join Flickr in the first place, because it's not just about looking at images or commenting, it's about community, which is like the, the whole thing, right? With photography, especially with the Black women photographers, Flickr group, right? The activity in there brings everybody together with a common bond, right? And then a grant like this is a little gasoline on the fire. So $2,500. And then, you know, for all those people that we just went through, they get their free year of Flickr and Smug Mug pro mm -hmm. and you're off into the races so even if you haven't i don't want to make this sound like a commercial or anything but it, it is genuine to if you haven't poked around in there even not as a member just go in there and find the genres that you're interested in and look at the long list of groups that are dedicated to that genre is it's insane um okay so let's let's announce this year's winner shall we if i can find I it here we go all right, drum roll. Don't do a drum roll, Alistair, but drum roll in your heads, please. The winner of the 2023 Flickr and Black Women Photographers Grant is Genesis Falls with her shot called Children at Play. Let me read a little bit about Genesis. So Genesis Falls is a contemporary portrait photographer who lives and works in my hometown, Chicago, Illinois. She um, uses her love for black and white film to demonstrate feelings and emotions through her lens, capturing people at some of their purest moments. And here's a quote from Genesis um, about this shot. She said, it stands out to me not only because of the subjects, but the visual way the light is streaming through the water. I agree. What do, you, what do you think of the shot, Edwina? And congratulations, by the way, Genesis Falls. Yes, congrats to Genesis. But I also love this photo for the reason that you said, like the light coming through the water and the child's hands in the stream. And then you've got one child kind of hiding <laughs> from the water itself. And it's just like a great moment. You just think of summer in the city, like kids playing. And I grew up in New York, so I'm just like, this is like a photo that reminds me of my childhood. And there have just been so many great film photographers that worked on capturing children at play. Like I think of uh, Berenice Abbott and um, Deanne Arbus also has um, some photos of kids. And it just kind of reminds me of that, like those classic, you know, film, film photos that you see of just children enjoying um, the city 
Helen Levitt too. Yeah. That's another right. like photographer that it kind of reminds me of. Yeah, and it's a it's a good it's a good inspiration, more inspiration for for being focused in your photography. And what I mean by that is a shot like this, when I see a shot like this, yeah, it could have been serendipitous. You know, Genesis could have just been walking by and snapped the shot, which is great, right? This, I'm sure this hap this un this scene unfolds in many cities, you know, especially in summer, especially these summers that we're having now, right? It's mm -hmm. not exactly chilly outside. Uh, when I look at this from a like a, a photographer education standpoint, giving yourself a self project like this, like on a Saturday late afternoon, close to magic hour or whatever, or in the morning, if you're that person saying, you know what, I'm going to go out today and give myself a challenge, say it's in this genre, give myself a challenge. And my challenge is titled at play, right? Instead of children at play, it could just be at play. I want to get shots of people at play enjoying themselves. Put yourself on those rails and then go out with a camera and a format memory card and only capture shots that you feel like are reflective of that particular topic. And you end up with shots like this because now you're not kind of looking around. Oh, that doorknob looks good. I mean, I'll take a picture of that. Oh, look at that. A policeman standing next to their car. That looks good. You know, you're mm -hmm. focused on is that at play or is it not at play? Not move on to the next one. Very simple, basic programming, right? If then statement, right? So now you're out there and you're, you come back with a set of images that you can cull through that are on a particular theme. You can make triptychs, you can make solo shots like this one, but it all kind of works together, especially on Instagram, because now you can drip out a theme that tells a story over time, boom. Mm -hmm. Or you upload all these shots into a group in Flickr and tell that story linearly or all at once however you want to display it so really really cool shot i am pleased that this one this one got picked and congratulations even even the name genesis falls is a great name i love that yeah. <laughs> that is a really cool very, name. very great name for an artist like <laughs> yeah yeah or yeah or anybody really yeah that's that's yeah. fantastic all right, so we will leave it right there. We are at the end of this live stream. And Weena, thank you for coming on again and uh, having this right. conversation and walking through these images. What a treat to have you on. Yeah. Congrats to all the winners, the runners up, the winner, Genesis, but the runners up, you all, and everyone who submitted work. Like, we went through a lot of images to judge this competition, and it was great. Like, we saw a lot of good work. We couldn't. <laughs> award everybody but um if you didn't win this time hopefully we'll be back with another grant opportunity that you can contribute but we saw a lot of great work and this was a very fun experience love it yes yeah agreed and uh edwina tell us a little you and i did an interview which of course like i said we'll link in the blog post for this over to the interview you and i did so people can have more color on this this grant sure. but um you know, for the folk, you know, I read a little bit of bio about you, you know, so mm -hmm. and people can watch the interview to find out more about you. But tell I'm going to put you on the spot here. Tell everyone about your adventure at the Beyonce concert a couple months ago. Yeah, <laughs> so you, I took my first speech. You know, you know, the thing I took away from that, Edwina, the thing I took away yes. from that when we talked about it was you didn't shoot it. You went there oh. to a once in a lifetime opportunity and as a concert photographer and didn't shoot it why uh well it's she's one of those artists where it's very difficult <laughs> to photograph yes. her but i did bring like a personal camera and i took some photos i just haven't shared them um but you know i have them but it was just an amazing experience it's like a three-hour show at the superdome and the tour was supposed to end in new orleans but it ended up ending actually in uh, kansas city so when my husband and I decided we were going to go. We were really excited. We were like, you know, tour end in New Orleans. We're going to make a vacation out of it. So it was a really great time. Like, really good. I'm looking forward to the film coming out. Like, we are going to go see it in IMAX uh, the first weekend in December. So, yeah. <laughs> Very good. Very we get to relive the experience all over again in a movie theater. Mm, mm, yeah, concerts and movie theaters. It's the thing now, isn't it? Yeah. All right. We will leave it right there. Thank you, everybody, for joining us on this live stream, participating. And uh, all the runners up, congratulations. You know you know what to do now to, to get your goods. And of course, to our winner, Genesis Falls, with her shot, Children at Play, fantastic shot. 
great. And it was great being here hosting this. So be sure to check it out. And also, if you're not a member of the Black Women Photographers Flickr group, pop over there. And even if you don't become a member, just look through some of the work that's in there. It's fantastic. It's beautiful work that is, and it's a group because it's Flickr, right? It's a never ending scroll of images and new ones get added every single day. So take a look at it. And if you are in the demographic that can join this group, join the group and get in there and throw your shots in there so that your voice can be heard too. So we'll leave it right there, Edwina Hay. Oh, Edwina, if people, people want to connect with you, what's, the, what's your, your place on the web where you direct people to check out your work? Sure. Uh, my website is thisisnotaphotograph.com. Uh, it's a mouthful, but that's <laughs> my portfolio. And um, you can see my work. And then I try to post to my blog when new images go up. Um, I'm on Instagram as A-R-E not photos, uh, because this is not a photograph is too long uh, for a Instagram username. And yeah, I think those are the two main places that you can find me. I'm also like on other things like Facebook uh, under Edwina Hay Photography and um, not really using Twitter much these days, but also there are not photos. And then on Flickr as Eats Dirt. So <laughs> those are <Very> the main <laughs> places <laughs> that you can find me and my work. And Very they're showing my... Instagram feed. So that's uh, Sister Nancy performing at the same venue that I captured June McDoom. So you can see um, the wall that's in the background with all the ashtrays and it's fun to play with lights on that back wall. I got it. That's obviously New York, right? Someplace yeah, it's cool in Brooklyn. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I just so you know, I live in the opposite of New York, so <laughs> there's, no, there's no there's no nightlife excitement or culture where I live. Uh, it's a small town in California, and that was on your Flickr page, by the way. That wasn't on Instagram, yes. so that was yeah, very cool. All right, we'll leave it right there, folks. If uh, you want to watch this replay, of course, it'll be embedded in the blog post with the announcement, which is now public, so we can do that. If you want to follow Edwina, head over to any of the places that she mentioned. We'll link to her in the blog post as well. And, you know, of course, check out her interview on thisweekinphoto.com. Just head over to thisweekinphoto.com and type in Edwina Hay. You'll find the interview that we did. And with that, we'll leave it right there. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Flickr, for, for making this happen, Smug Mug and This Week in Photo, and the Black Women Photographers Group, which is what all this is for. So... Thank you, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye, everyone.